When it comes to famous and ferocious fishies, nothing captures the imagination like the great white shark. And yes, we know that great whites are more than just little fishies. We were just going for some sweet alliteration there, people. But with the Great White's undeniable place in pop culture due to movies, news reports, and even kids' TV shows, remember street sharks? Why is it that no aquarium in the world houses these incredible predators? Surely they could make a fortune. What's the deal here? Don't worry, we got you. Stick around, because we're taking a big bite out of this mystery. Carcaridon carcarius, also known as the Great White Shark, is truly one of the most majestic animals found in our oceans. It also happens to be one of the largest, with adult Great Whites growing to an astounding 20 feet long, and can weigh up to an impressive 6,600 pounds. They are known to live up to 30 years and play a very important role in their aquatic ecosystems. See, the Great White Shark is a top predator. And just by doing its natural thing of hunting and eating, it will keep other sea populations in check. Populations like elephant seals and sea lions, and ultimately increases diversity in the ocean. Where can these submarines with teeth be found? Prime locations include the Farallon Islands off the California coast and the island of Guadalupe, Mexico, mainly between the warmer months of July and August. But while these amazing animals have been around a long time, after all, ancient fossils date them back to 450 million years ago, during what is known as the Late Ordovician period. They didn't enter the lexicon of pop culture until a certain movie came along in 1975. Oh, maybe you've heard of it. It's a little film known as Jaws. And it took the nation by storm. With a budget of just $7 million, Jaws swept the imagination of the nation and solidified Spielberg as a top talent in Hollywood by grossing $472 million. Overnight, Great Whites were famous, and have been ever since. But with how immensely popular Great Whites became in the 1970s, why aren't there any Great White Sharks in aquariums across the globe? Sure, some other sharks seem to make the cut, like Lemon and Nurse Sharks. But what about the big boy? Ticket sales would surely soar. What's going on here? Well, to answer that, we gotta talk a bit about price and a bit about science. Let's start with just how much having a Great White Shark in your tank would cost. Sharks eat a lot. It's estimated that they would need 30 kilos of meat every three days due to the fact that they are constantly burning calories. What with all that swimming and all? And don't kid yourself, 30 kilos of food is a lot. Here's another way to think about it. For a shark to sustain itself, it would have to eat a seal pup once every three days. What this means is that aquariums have to accommodate these voracious eaters right out of their pocket, and it's going to cost them a lot. In fact, the price of just maintaining a shark can often take people by surprise. Take Monique Samuels, star of the show The Real Housewives of Potomac, and an avid shark fan, as well as private owner of the underwater beasts. Her 876-gallon tank costs a whopping $60,000, and the price of upkeep for her underwater pets? $1,600 to $2,000 every month. Hey, all that krill and shrimp starts to add up. But you may be thinking, well, national aquariums have made millions of dollars each year. Adding in the budget for a great white and, of course, building the tank should be easy. Well, think again. Take the Baltimore National Aquarium, one of the most famous and impressive aquariums in the world. In 2018, they made approximately $51,206,582 in profit. But their expenses came to $57,645,060. Ah, but we hear you. If they just add a great white shark, then they will make all the money back and then some. Well, here's where science shuts that idea down right quick. Many aquariums have tried to house the legendary Great White, especially after Jaws mania in the 1970s and 1980s. SeaWorld and San Francisco's Steinhardt Aquarium are just two institutions that wanted to capitalize on the popularity of Great Whites during this time. But ultimately, they found out the sad truth of trying to keep these predators in a tank. And the same problems kept coming up time and time again. Great Whites, when kept in captivity, have trouble eating and swimming and are known to have a number of health problems from the day that they enter the tanks. In one of the most shocking statistics of all, if a great white lives longer than a week in captivity, that is an anomaly, and many times the great whites will only survive for a few days. One of the main reasons these beautiful sharks have so much trouble is that they were built for the open seas and can swim incredibly fast. When in captivity, it's very common that they run into walls and injure themselves. 
They have even been known to just stop swimming. And if you know anything about a shark's anatomy, you know that spells disaster. Sharks need to always be moving, because that allows water to enter their gills so they can get the oxygen they need. No swimming means no oxygen, and that means no shark. But it doesn't stop there. Experts believe that the glass of an aquarium may interrupt the shark's electroreception system and may even overload it. These creatures were meant for the open seas, not for a tiny tank. But we know what you're going to say. What about just building a bigger tank? And hey, maybe the aquarium can just raise ticket prices to pay for it. Good thought. Only, we bet you haven't looked into just how much renovations to an aquarium cost. Take a look at these statistics. The Baltimore Aquarium did a recent renovation of their waterfront campus in 2017, and it cost them a colossal $14 million. And they didn't raise ticket prices for this one. They were backed by private donors and also public fundraising. And remember, they had already made a net loss in revenue that year. As for raising ticket prices, we're not so sure how that would go. First of all, let's not forget that whenever ticket prices go up, people get mad. And quick. In fact, back in 1984, when the Baltimore Aquarium was shiny and new, ticket prices had to be raised from $4.50 to $5.75 just to accommodate the high price of feeding the 5,000 forms of life that were housed there. That was just an increase of $1.75. If it had to be raised today, it would look something more like this. It's not uncommon for 1.6 million people to visit the Baltimore Aquarium. So to raise $14 million would mean upping tickets by $8.75 a pop. And that's already on top of the $39.95 adult ticket price, the $29.95 children's ticket price, and the senior citizens' $34.95 ticket price. Let's not forget though, you'd have to also add in upkeep for the shark, which equates to thousands of dollars a month the new marine biologists that would have to be added to the staff at $52,000 a year. Oh, and let's not forget that you'd have to make sure the tank was huge so that the shark would have enough space to swim around. And, oh wait, all of this has already been tried. And guess what? It didn't work out at all. In 2004, the Monterey Bay Aquarium decided they'd go the distance. They would build the tank, they would get the staff, they would do everything right so that their great white would be happy, and it still belly flopped. The longest that they housed their shark was for 198 days, and even then, they found that the big tank method only worked for small baby sharks. It really seems that it's not meant to be when it comes to great whites in tanks. Another example is last year when an aquarium in Japan acquired an 11.5 foot long great white that was captured by fishermen and it survived only three days in captivity. Nature is trying to tell us something here, guys. Leave the sharks out in the wild. Did you forget about the safe and shark-friendly option of taking a dip in a shark-proof cage? If you've got the funds, this is the way to go. A one-day cage dive in the Farallon Islands is going to run you $775, but a full package is going to include the diving air, belts and weights, and of course, breakfast and food for your trip as well. And that ain't such a bad price either as cage diving in the Bahamas is a bit more expensive, due to the requirement of all cage divers being certified, which brings their multi-day shark diving packages to $3,100 to $3,900. With those prices, though, better make sure that you really, really love sharks. So when it's all said and done, looks like your best bet for seeing these majestic denizens of the deep is to stick to watching Shark Week. These beautiful creatures just weren't meant to be caged. Hey, all the more reason to put them in your next movie. If you had a blockbuster like Jaws, you'd certainly be one of the richest. Tell us your favorite Jaws moment in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more great content. Thanks for watching. See you next time.